Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first of our three Bishops Composers concerts. It is normally around this time of the year that we showcase our best composers in a concert that would have been live and, amongst a number of small ensembles, would have featured our school orchestra under the baton of Joss Wrench. This has not been possible this year. However, we've adapted to the challenges of 2020 and have recorded a number of the smaller ensemble works with live musicians. The larger works, though, have been sampled by Grant McLachlan and Michael Wilson Trollope. It is a huge task, and I know I speak on behalf of the composers when conveying to them our sincere thanks. The selected works showcased in these three concerts are by grade 10s, 11s and matrics, who have composition lessons as part of the subject music curriculum. Speaking personally, I think composing, whether it comes naturally or as a struggle, is a valuable experience as it broadens your understanding of music in general and hopefully gives you far greater insights into the pieces you perform. Before the boys introduce their works, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the many musicians, the music staff that were involved and gave up their time so generously. Hello, I am Felix de Brain. I am a grade 10 musician in Bishop's College and I composed a piece called The Name of the Wind, which is for violin, viola, cello and piano. On the day that I decided to compose this piece, I came across a song called The Rose by Anna McBroom. I liked it so much, I took the first bar, I took it as my melody, and I decided to just see where the music went from there. Hello everyone, my name is Jesse Barth and I am a grade 10 music student. When it comes to composing any sort of music, you have some sort of idea or theme if you will. However, with my arrangement that wasn't the case. Due to it being a project, my main goal was to complete a composition and make sure it sounds at least listenable and nice and only afterwards did I realize there was no message or story behind the melody. So, after the composition was completed, I decided to take a step back and listen, not as the man who composed it, but as the outsider. And only then did I find out what the actual meaning of the melody and the chords were. The images that I 
got while listening to it was the moon shining in the night sky and the mystery behind it. Because even though we landed on the moon 51 years ago, we still don't know much about it. Please enjoy Moonlight Reflection on a River's Surface. Hello everyone, my name is John Smith, and today I'll be presenting my composition titled The Awakening. So just to give you a very brief background of the piece, it, like many other pieces being performed, was composed as part of a class project focusing on the musical style minimalism, which essentially means that the piece itself is going to be something that exemplifies minimalistic character. Now, with this in mind, it's certainly not going to be one of the most exciting pieces that you'll be hearing, but it's definitely one that I would hope would be able to encapsulate the fine art of minimalism through the character and characteristics of continuity, gradual change, and fundamentally, subtlety. The piece, The Awakening, got its name for the imagery that it attempts to invoke to the listener the imagery of a dry stir at the beginning, which gradually wakens, broadens, and warms up to a far fuller conclusion. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, The Awakening. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Adam Otala, and I'm not sure how to pronounce the name of my piece as it was translated to Anglo-Saxon. And it, loose, it loosely translates to the quest to hydrate. And that's because when I listen to it, it kind of gives me a sense of being in the desert. And that might be because of the melody that I, that I wrote. Um, and it's in, I believe, the Phrygian mode. And the little motif that I wrote in the beginning um, sounds like this. Now, one thing that I really like about my composition is that I was able to use my sort of limited um, knowledge of harmony to actually use the, the melody or that motive in, in a number of interesting ways to invoke like different feelings. So um, in the beginning, you'll actually hear uh, over a minor chord, it sounds like this. But then later in the piece, I wrote this little middle section, which um, is quite a romantic section, and I used the exact same motive over completely different chords. Over basically those chords. And you'll notice how, even though I use the exact same notes, it invokes a totally different, like completely romantic feel. And I'm really proud of the middle section that I wrote because uh, Mr. Coletti actually said um, the words, I wish I had written that. So probably the proudest moment of my life. <laughs> I hope you enjoy my piece. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Oliver Kane Smith. I am a, I am a matric music pupil and uh, my piece is Tam Vanham. Uh, it is for full orchestra and it uh, roughly translates to So Vain. The piece features two, uh, two parts. Uh, the first is harsh and dramatic, while the second is lively and joyous and it is about the musical journey between these two parts. Uh, they are also joined by a fanfare, and there is also a fanfare at the beginning, and it also ends the piece. Uh, the first part is written in an Aeolian mode, which gives it a very Renaissance feel, uh, while the second features a uh, repeating melody, um, which is the symbol for joy and the liveliness in the piece. Um, I didn't have any clear uh, inspiration for this piece. Um, I just experimented with uh, the rhythms and the melodies as I went along, and I developed it from there. Hope you enjoy.